Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a nice Saturday. Uh, I have a few errands to run. Luckily, uh, it's going to be a fairly short day. I only have about 600 miles to drive today. I'm staying fairly local, so I'm not really planning out any sort of a trip, other than I am going to go out of my way to check out the new updated Baker EVgo charger and just uh, see what's going on out in the deep desert. Uh, while I'm out on that side of California, and uh, yeah, so it should be fun. Let's head out. All right, so uh, we used a decent amount of energy. It normally wouldn't have taken this much to get to Baker, but you know, I drove home from work and then Ventura out here is a little bit farther than LA but you know we maintained decent fuel efficiency we're probably at right around 20 percent right now all right so the big question here I have is um so they have this all right it is that's right 350 kilowatt also I think these are the same cords that the recargo units are using the heavier cords because of the location relative to the bolt ev though i actually don't think i'm going to need to hold this it knows that we're connected i'm going to say start rfid it's verifying and you are allowed let's see all right so i did hear the thing try to shift so let's see if we can do this again I'm going to take out this. Seems weird. It means that I can't really do a torque prologue on this, which is unfortunate. So I do hear the activator attempting to start. Alright, so yeah, I think this is the same issue that we were seeing before. It's just the cord is too heavy for this. So anyway, started at 18%, so that's pretty good. So this was a pretty standard session for anything over 150 amps. Bolt EV owners have questions of whether even faster chargers will result in even faster charging speeds, but it really doesn't. The Bolt EV does max out at about 150 amp draw. If you'll notice from here, the battery temperature stayed pretty close to 90 degrees, the high 87s, even though the temperatures were actually relatively cool. And so the main reason for this, I believe, is just the driving speeds. The load on the motor and the draw from the battery was enough to maintain a higher battery temperature. And that's part of the reason for the initial slower charging speed. The Bolt EV was running thermal management. All right, so it looks like I got cut off. Um, I think I was pretty close to 70%, but it, this screen isn't displaying it. So I, I almost want to see if I have the same issue activating again, though. Uh, I'm going to charge. I'm already past the cutoff. So what was happening is this cord was, you know, pulling down. You can see how much weight. And uh, I think this is actually something that GM is going to want to possibly do as a recall for the early generation Bolt EVs because what's going to end up happening is as more and more charging providers start offering these higher power charging solutions, you're going to have older Bolt EV owners thinking that their cars are broken or that the station is broken and it's a really bad user experience. So far it seems like the newer Bolt EVs haven't had any issues with this whatsoever. 
uh, but this one has so just that that much weight hanging down GM if you're watching this I do think this is something I, I think you should do this for some of the early bull TV owners is maybe upgrade our CCS port uh, even just to the one that you're using in uh, the current bull TV so it it's not having this uh, this give issue with this much weight from the cord all right so for this I'm not even going to actually lift the cord I'm just gonna say let's start So it's trying to, to do the actuator. So yeah, so it, 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 it's just got to be the weight from these new cords. So I'm gonna say, okay. One thing I like is you don't have to leave the screen to reactivate this. See, I'm lifting this up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that now. Try to find a good technique for this. And there is also a delay, it seems like. All right, so maybe that was not the, the way I needed to do it. So it also looks like that is giving you a delay so that you can use it to... Re relieve, I think the term is relieve weight off the cord. Oh, no. Sorry. All right, let's see. Yep, I just felt the actuator. Yep, and once this actuator catches, you're good. So, yeah, so we were up to like 75%. So. Um, yeah, there you go. So it, it, it did start again. Bull TV owners, you're probably not going to be filming while you do it, so it's not going to be as hard for you, but it's still going to be a bit of an issue if I think it was that initial delivery of Bull TVs, probably uh, the ones that were delivered maybe before March of 2017. But we'll need to confirm with GM. Uh, I'm going to post this up as a separate video just so hopefully GM can take care of this as a potential recall item for those very early first generation Bull TVs uh, to, to sort of bolster this charge port. And, uh, but yeah, so here we are charging and uh, yeah, no other problems. So you just have to swipe your card, grab your cord, and let the charge start. All right. You know, Charging at 16 kilowatts, you know, it doesn't feel so bad when it's on a uh, 350 kilowatt charger. Whoo, yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, end this session. I want to see if uh, EVgo has uh, started this as standard practice on their new chargers, but before they weren't letting me stop a charger uh, unless I used my card. So let's see what happens here. Oh, nope. Doesn't seem to matter. All right. All right, well, it's time to head out from EVgo Baker. I'm going to probably swing by a Tesla supercharger over there just to do some donuts in the gravel. So I'd love to hear what you, uh, what you think about this charging session. Have you been able to use your Bolt EV on some of these higher powered chargers? Do you own an early model Bolt EV and have you had these same issues where you actually have to hold the heavier power cord in order for the actuator to actually be able to latch on, uh, close, and, and allow for proper communication between the car and the charger? 
uh, like I said, I think this is something that we do need to escalate to GM, at least for the early Bolt EV owners. Like I said, it doesn't seem to be an issue uh, for Bolt EV owners past maybe early 2017. So they do seem to have taken care of it. I, I do think it's something GM should consider doing for the early Bolt EV adopters because it does actually affect the charging experience. As long as you uh, hold the cord when it's activating, you shouldn't have a problem activating even on these higher power chargers with the really heavy power cords. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.